can start with Kate and then report back to the larger group what went on in your small, <laughs> yeah. small focus group. Okay. Okay. okay, beautiful. Um, hi, I'm Kate Yordoff, and So I'm Kate Yordahl, and our group, it's interesting, um, given the way material sort of was put out, we didn't end up talking a lot about women. Um, we talked about a lot of issues because the, the prompts really caused us to think about now, and we had opportunity change, everyone's a photographer, the loss of commercial opportunities, the expanding of both good and bad, being rampant, rampant in a negative way hard to shift through all the Facebook, Instagram imagery. We talked about the whole idea of um, what do we call photography, and both this idea of the world being saturated by images, but also a sense of empowerment, that we were empowered to, that what we had access to was bigger than what we would have in the past. So we really got into the, a lot of the technology. And then as we talked about photographers themselves, um, we talked about needing to be self-motivated and self-defining, defining ourselves, defining what photography is. Um, exciting time, needing to be a jack of all trades, um, the diversity of fine art to low art, and then um, d not listening to what other people think, focusing on what we like, and again, opportunity, and then a uh, heightens of opportunities for experimentation. Um, but then when we got to institutions um, in terms of just ideas, um, we really talked about, if you talk about institutions, the difference between what a community college does, what a university does, and what CPA can do or does. Um, conceptual technique and then CPS being a lot in the West Coast tradition of photography. Um, the need for ideas to be discussed and just enjoying this conversation we were having so much and wanting to see it expanded. So more opportunities just to talk about anything. Um, the need to serve the membership of CPA and find the difficulty for nonprofits to get funding. Um, getting the belief of the don donors, so the idea of bringing more experimental artists to educate the, the community. And then we asked the question of why more men weren't here today, and the thought of how the promotion was done to not feel like it was a conversation everyone should come to, and the information needing to be out earlier and more, and then we got back to the need for more volunteers, so you all can, um, can think about that as an opportunity. And you did so. all that in a half hour? Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I, I, didn't read, I didn't read all of it, <laughs> but I hope I captured the gist of what we talked about. Yeah. Could we ask you, I'll just say, since yeah. I'm the note taker, yes. this is what you get yes. from being a professor. Yes. Uh, were there any specific things? Do you, do you have recommendations for the CPA? Or I think um, reaching out more, because okay. um, there was a sense that there could be more people here, and particularly more men, that there were people, people who thought that men weren't welcome in some way. And that certainly wasn't, I don't think, the, the, in, um, the intention. Um, the idea of having more opportunities to talk about photography and talk about ideas. Um, and that it's important that we include more experimentation in, in, the, in what happens at CPA. Okay. Well, my name's Carol Henry, and I appreciate this opportunity. Um, and in my group, I had Linda herself and Jane as well. So we really did try and stay focused on the women's issues uh, more than the CPA, I guess, angle. And um, we had a, a very diverse group uh, of several opinions about the state of photography today, and we did have a male in our group, which was a, a gift. So, uh, <laughs> um, some of the, the ideas about the first topic um, was about photography itself was about digital, of course, and the expansion of the medium to reach out to more more people, and I think women, personally, I think it is um, putting cameras in more women's hands these days and the ability to share their, their visual 
um, creations. Uh, there were people who were excited about that opportunity, and then there were those in the group who felt that um, it closed doors to them. That digital had closed doors either through the disappearance of certain media availability or um, just a technological advance that they couldn't keep up with. So it was an interesting balance, I think, uh, an assessment of photography today. And of course, that reaches out to both men and women, but was, it was interesting. So then we moved on to um, the next point, which was photographers themselves. And um, social media came up as an angle for photographers, uh, self-expression, uh, photography that has a sense of place um, and documentary photography came up and uh, interestingly uh, Vivian Mayer came up and we talked about uh, whether it's important to have your art form recognized in your own lifetime and she being a woman who had a whole other calling and career and didn't have the opportunity to show her work, but we did discuss that somewhat. And then as far as the third point went, um, the institutions, galleries, workshops, et cetera, I thought something interesting came up uh, from a, a female perspective and was the cost of workshops, besides just the absence of women being represented in institutions and um, other arenas in photography uh, was that the cost of furthering er your education um, would be more of a challenge now than it has in the past in regards to advancing photography. So um, that was how we wrapped it up, I think, in our group. And then we went on to talk about how can CPA reach out to women. and. Um, there were some renegade suggestions, like <laughs> uh, making shows where no one's name is attached to the visual image. Um, but we all agree that you need to reach out to more women. And uh, one of the thoughts, and particularly an interesting thought that Linda had, was a women's lecture series on photography every couple of weeks, which is quite frequent, but then you won't forget about us if you're doing it that often, um, have a women, uh, a female photographer or visiting speaker. Um, no, but can I correct that a little bit? Yes. Um, I was thinking of it more um, as a history class that would be over a number of weeks, and that would be focus on the history of women in photography mm -hmm. so that the whole community would have an opportunity to have a deeper history and knowledge of the Education. what women have brought to the field um, and I think it's a great idea having women lecturers come here often too but I was thinking of more of a general um, history of photography type course okay and one of my favorite um, suggestions that Linda had was the um, year of the woman photographer at CPA. And um, <laughs> um, with workshops and the collector prints. So, you know, the collector series prints have the, just go out on them and make one year all women photography, women's photography. Okay. <laughs> well, at, as part of it, yes. Um, but there was also uh, some comments about self-publishing and how self-publishing can help women uh, in this day and age uh, reach out and share their work. And that ties in with the, the collector's prints, I think. And that pretty much is a wrap-up of our group. Uh, oh.
Um, sure. We didn't mean shows with no oh. names identified. Oh. We meant jury selection. Oh. No yeah, so we should include okay. the file names. Okay. You know, that's usually always the case, though. I gotta say, I, I'm right. jury to show, and we don't, we don't ever do anything. Yeah. Some shows but do you, know, you know, to 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 completely reinforce what you're saying, our group said, how about more female jurors? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I jury to yeah. show. A yeah. lot of guys have jury shows here, but yeah. they have had, as Robin of Venuti pointed out, some uh, uh, some illustrious women jurors. Mm -hmm. well, the last one, the very last show was yeah. the Crocker Museum mm -hmm. curator. We had a woman come from the National Gallery of Art. Well, just to interject, a thought that our group had on that is yeah. women jurors, gallery owners, yeah. and folks like that don't necessarily select female photographers. Even if they're women. That's an Even interesting that, conversation. Yeah. Uh, just mm -hmm. as a side note. They might do a little bit better, but proportionally. Yeah. Yeah, good, good point. So I'm Susan Hyde Green, and I had the other group, and uh, we um, we had a common thread through our entire uh, all three sections, which was um, women need to be more recognized in every way, and the first under photography now we talked about a mentorship program, women mentoring younger women. And um, someone thought that women now had actually more courage. Their work was bolder. They were more able to, they had more confidence to go out and do, and do their work with confidence and than ever before. And, and one person talked about how women, women's aesthetic has more int intimacy and more of a long, long view. And it's more um, important and different and yet not as ex ex respected. That women are more able to make connections of things, more interested in making connections between different, different things. And then under ourselves, photo selves, um, we talked about t m money and time limitations and that local arts organizations need more of a shift in thinking to, look, to reach out and look for more women. And that women shouldn't just be volunteers with more men on the walls, that the women should be on the walls, and that we're not equally represented. And often without knowing, we came up with the same thing that you did about women curators. Um, often, they just don't support women for some reason. And we said that needs to change. It's almost like we're our own worst enemy. And then uh, under institutions, we talked about having women, re more women reviewing portfolios of women um, and ways, just is there a way to make gal more galleries aware of who the women artists are in the community? Who are the women photographers in this community? And someone suggested creating a list which went into a website, the idea for a website which could be a, like an index of artists with images and something about them um, that everybody could have access to. And so the museums, the galleries, um, the Center for Photographic Art, every place would know who we are. Um, and then somebody mentioned communitypalette.com with monthly exhibitions. Um, but, but what we really wanted to take away from this for the center to take away from this is we think they should give us a show. There should be an exhibition, mm -hmm. a women's exhibition, and it should be big enough so that it can incorporate a lot of different women and a lot of their work. And someone suggested we could even use the hallway in addition to the main gallery so we could have more, more women. And um, we just need recognition. That was the bottom line. If we had one thing to tell the center, it would be we need recognition. Yes. I was going to say you could call the exhibit Women on the Wall, right? Women belong on the wall. Okay. Well, we could, we could do that. <laughs> Actually, I left one thing out on that, on that part. Um, uh, someone suggested 10 plus 10 plus 10. Um, Barbara Serbent used to work at the Corcoran gallery and she said that um, they would invite 10 artists 
who would invite 10 people, who would invite 10 people. And that way, you would, you would have a larger cross-section of people from the community and people that may not be as well known as others, but still are fabulous artists and should be known. So um, that's our, our part. Thank you. I just want to throw in, no, I don't want to use that. Um, <laughs> one of the things that Photo Alliance does every, once a year, and it's, it, it's, and Ted is always there, and I don't know if Brian, have you come up for the portfolio review? Uh, not, not yet, but uh, okay. I've, I've <laughs> sent one, I've yeah. actually sent one of my best grad students, and they've enjoyed meeting with Ted and David and all your, all your reviewers. Yeah. But, the portfolio reviews uh, are a really important way for you to get feedback on your work. And the one at Photo Alliance, I'm, I'm proud to say, it's kind of like Photo Fest with trainer wheels. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not as competitive, it's, and it's not in Houston. Uh, Photo Fest is quite fabulous, but um, there's also a good one up in Portland. Um, and it's a way to really build your community and, and get support and feedback, uh, critical feedback, which you, 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 want, you want that too, not just that you're wonderful. <laughs> so. you, you just had a great uh, photo lines lecture by a great woman photographer a week ago, mm -hmm. right? Tina, well, we had Tina Barney. Tina, Tina Barney, yeah. yeah. Well, I will say about photo lines, that you show, you feature more women than almost right. any other organization. They really are, you really are very good about that. I guess I can do this without, this, this makes funny noises. <laughs> I'll just shout. So do you. Touche. I think much of what I could say would uh, follow directly from what has already been said. So let me just take a slightly different tack on, on one thing, and that is in, in looking at, the, at uh, trying to focus in on specific things that could be done, uh, there is a certain sense that maybe doing all of these specific things, while helpful, doesn't really solve the problem. It, it just sort of moves something up to the front of the line for a little while, and then it will slide back because structurally the underpinnings aren't there. So we ended up, I think, gravitating a little bit toward what I would call the big ball of wax theory of art making, which is basically that everything matters and that you need to lift the whole, the whole shebang. And one way that one would do this uh, in a very broad-based manner is to recognize that perhaps women do tend toward a slightly different view in a slightly different subject matter than men. Not overtly or greatly, but like the force of gravity. It, uh, would, you if you watch look that. at the, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. at the <laughs> pictures that were up here just before we started the, the, the little round robin discussions uh, of, of the, the different women who were moderating. Uh, if, if, if I were asked, were these made by a man or a woman, I would have said a woman. And, and, I, and I think you sense that there was a certain greater kind of intimacy, there was a certain more of a human scale to things, small objects, there was a certain hands-on atmosphere of creating things almost uh, three-dimensionally and montaging them or constructing them, as opposed to looking for the biggest sequoia in the forest and pointing the camera up. <laughs> and if you could develop a respect for the equality of the subject matter, then you wouldn't find that the big monumental print was, was edging out the more intimate and, and quieter print. And that would be a way of just honoring the different worlds that we live in. Uh, I've always maintained if you, if you lead an interesting life, you'll make interesting photographs. If you, if you live at home with children, photograph children. If you have a wonderful garden, photograph your garden. You know, there shouldn't be any great qualitative difference in that result. And as far as helping the center in, in some direct manner to help things along, uh, uh, one theory that came up was purely and simply that if there were more events such as this that had
substantial, worthwhile content in them. Wouldn't have to be about women, it would just be anything that would draw in an equal audience of men and women, and that when they were participating in it, they would have equal respect in their views, that again, slowly but surely, the tide would rise. That was our two cents worth. We could use the word affirmative. Having swanny. Having swanny. Oh, yes. Yes, I think. So, the rope of self-promotion aspects. Yeah. Well, another thing that we discussed was having in school having the word in art schools having women having more men, women artists discussed in classes and represented so that right from the beginning people know the history of women in art women in photography and um, we all thought that was a good idea and we had one man in our group who thought of, he would love that if he'd been in school he would have really enjoyed that so education I think really is everything I remember when I was studying at RISD, we had Jansen's History of Art, and the only women in that book were naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. They didn't even have Georgia O'Keeffe in the book. There was not one woman artist. So things have gotten better. A bit. That suggestion about bringing in Swanee or Mary Virginia Swanson is brilliant. And you could even say, you know, give us your killer internationally renowned uh, workshop on self-promotion, but why don't you just, you know, bias it towards women a little bit, you know? And besides, she used to run your workshop program. Mm -hmm. out of That's here. right. Yeah. That's for bring, sure. bring Swanee back. You're done, right? Brian, you want to talk about this issue of affirmative action ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, in our group, feared, you know, uh, the only possible drawback to some of these really uh, affirmative suggestions would be if if they are forced. If we had shows and said, and we just you know there was a blind a blind curator, and they just chose what they thought was the best work. And before we mounted the show, we said there aren't enough women. We're going to force women photographs into the show st on a statistical basis, and then you're forcing work in the show, uh, and then the name tags do go up and everybody's identifiable, is it possible that women's photography could be disserved, you know, if, mm -hmm. if uh, uh, lesser quality work were forced mm -hmm. into a show? I've heard that argument that a lot, that and I, I don't, yeah. there's plenty of good I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Oh, Brian, I, love, yeah. Brian I, I think if you mentioned like um, jurors who don't see what the names are. I think statistically, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, that the statistics show that um, a lot more women are chosen for those kind of shows if the jurors don't know mm. the gender of the artist. And I've, I've seen some graphs, you know, that it's more closely half and half. But in shows where people are invited and they know who they are, it's heavily skewed in, in favor of males. Am I correct? I believe so. The Gorilla Girls have done these so, um, statistics. I think there's some, something else to think about because something that I see with my work is my work is very intimate, it's yeah. very quiet, yeah. and it does not play well in digital submissions. And mm -hmm. so as, you know, if you're going to make personal quiet work, it and and a juror is sitting there, and I'm, I've organized jury shows as many of you have, I mean they're there and they see a thousand pictures. I can tell you by the twelfth picture, if you have really brilliant dynamic color, you're more likely to get picked <laughs> because of just fatigue, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. And to know, I mean, sort of what I've come to deal with is like, okay, I have to find places where my work can be heard. And I have to find places where it can be seen because it's not going to be seen in that, in that corral, that corral, you know, the, the quiet little, little images are not going to rise to the top of that particular mm -hmm. method of choosing. And so that may be something to think about. How can our work be seen when what it needs is quiet, when it needs contemplation, and it needs people who understand artwork on a different level than the kind of Instagram, wow, that was, that was cool.
Was it different when it was uh, like slide submissions, do you feel? Um, I find that my best results come when people see the actual prints. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's like, it's slide submissions were better than digital submissions because I think digital submissions both cause there to be a lot more submissions and there is a kind of bias in the project, in the digital projector that um, for a certain type of image. Yeah. And, and you may not found that as much. I mean, I think your imagery is brilliant. And, well, it's colorful, Yeah. but it doesn't have the quality of the print. Right. So I'm certain right. that if the print were present, it would have it would have a stronger appeal mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. a digital interpretation. So right. But having jury shows, I know that that's I mean it's so difficult to deal with prints. It's so difficult to deal with actual artwork. But as photographers, we need to put ourselves in places where our work is judged on itself, and to not tie our value to a rejection from an electronic submission. And I, I work on that every day. <laughs> I think we need to sort of wrap this up um, in some some way. Um, one or one or two more questions. Yes, I just wanted to add something that was we brought up in our group. But to get more and younger people, and we were especially talking about women because of the whole financial um, to make it happen, is maybe even thinking of a show that could be digitally projected. Mm -hmm. So that you don't make prints. Be, I love tangible watercolor kind of prints, but um, so that we actually have shows that that a lot of people could could be in. We actually just did that at CBA Carmel Visual Arts, where it was it was Big Sur Photo Play, and it was about Big Sur, and the concept was that it would be not necessarily professional photographers, but people who were just passing through Big Sur or lived in Big Sur, people who aren't photographers but wanted to share a visual image. And so we, the whole show was projected, it was every submission. It, it wasn't, um, there were only a few printed. But I found that it was difficult. You really have to have the right visual, um, audiovisual projection system, especially for the daytime to really be able to make that work, but I think it's viable. Can I add to that? Um, Photo Alliance for a few years, we, we stopped doing it, but we used to have slide slams. <laughs> and, it's fun. and it's fun. Yeah. And you've got a great patio for it. You get a few kegs. Um, <laughs> I mean, even what we did with the, with the, the participants here, having, I'm really glad to have seen your guys' work, because I wasn't familiar, I'm a little bit familiar with some of it, but, um, but just as an introduction, it doesn't, it can be very casual, it can, mm -hmm. and very inclusive, mm -hmm. and that's something that I think the center could, um, could do fairly easily here. Mm -hmm. And it would, um, it would create community, it's community. Yeah, it's community. community. And the younger people, I think, yeah, you know, get the beer here, though. You know, yeah. the wine. Yeah. Yeah. They won't let us use the patio anymore without paying. Yeah. Oh, we have to, get to rent the patio now. Yeah. <laughs> should we, should yeah. we take maybe five minutes and distill this down to maybe a few bullet points? No, I think this is. Is this so okay? Yeah, just give it all to yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll give them the whole scroll. Yeah. We'll give them their money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. If I might, I'd like to offer one other suggestion I think might be simple. Everything sure. seems more simple than it really is, of course. Modify the website to include featured artists, women artists, if you will. You, you modify the website in a way that you can actually promote the values that you're trying to in, in this Emerging workshop. Emerging artists. Emerging artists, established artists, but make it clear that it's it's consistent with the goals of promoting broader recognition of, of the role of women in photography. Do we have to say that we're trying to promote women or should we just do it? 
Do it. Just do it. I think we're at the point where if we keep saying, well, we're going to try to promote women more and blah, 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 it's just like, do we have to do that now? Aren't we past that? Let's just do it. Just do it. Without <laughs> saying we're doing Let's it. Let's just do it. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> just do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Any more questions? Questions? Yeah. Comments? Yeah. Anybody? Well, why don't you do one of these kind of events every year? Maybe not always about women in photography, but in some some aspect of photography that is this I kind think of it's round a great table. Idea. Thing. Mm -hmm. And just because this was titled Women in Photography, it did not exclude men. We had men as moderators, men that are supporting us. And we, as women, need to bring in the men to support us. Well, Ted and I are always happy to be, <laughs> <laughs> to be outnumbered. <laughs> the sacrifices we make. <laughs> very white and very wealthy, right. very male-dominated right. yeah. society in our area. Yes. We have people of color all yes. around us. Yes. And we have the biggest language capital of the world right here in Monterey. Mm -hmm. We could have, not just us as travelers, we could have people who have lived in these countries. We could have other languages. We could have a lot more diversity in, our, mm -hmm. in our, the ways we show photographs and the ways that the people we invite in. Because we need younger and more, and different. you know, I like I like different colors. You know. Yeah. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming, and our, and our panelists, and especially Linda Conner. Yeah. Thank you.